Well, good day, my friends. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. How are you all doing today? I hope you said great. Now, if you've seen my last couple of videos, you know that I have this amazing friend named Richard who has a fascinating collection, and I know people were wondering, what the heck did this guy do for a living? What does he do? What's his story? We're going to hear about it today, and it involves some presidents. Days with Jordan the Lion. It begins right now. So you saw all the fun stuff in Hollywood. That was my life of collecting and, and collecting all the fun stuff for f over 40 years. Uh, but this is my real love and this was my real uh, passion was in the Air Force. So I was uh, in the Air Force for 27 years. I was active duty from 1992 to 2019. Um, stationed at three different bases around, around the world. Basically, I was in Aviano Air Base, Italy, Guam in the South Pacific, and then five and a half years in England. And then in 2003, I went to Joint Base Andrews in Maryland or in the Washington, D.C. National Capital Region. And that's when I begin my career as a special air missions flight attendant. And basically what it was, was I was a uh, supply, speci supply specialist before that. I cross-trained into becoming an enlisted air crew member. And for that, I got to do some amazing things and fly some amazing people, as Jordan mentioned, some of the historic um, leaders of our nations. Uh, six and a half years under the Bush administration, all eight years under the Obama-Biden administration, and then in 2019 I retired. So under the Trump administration I retired, but got to fly some amazing people at the 99th Airlift Squadron at Joint Base Andrews, as well as presidential support, Air Force Two, First Lady, you name it, I've got, I got to fly them. And it was incredible. So this is just a little bit of my collection. So you'll see Sam Fox a lot. You'll see the red fox everywhere. Sam Fox spends, uh, stands for Special Air Missions Foxtrot or foreign and Sam Fox is the logo of Joint Base Andrews. At Andrews you have the Gulfstream aircraft as well as the Boeing aircraft. Now the Boeings are the 747s, there are two identical 747s and the Gulfstreams are these airplanes that you see here and here. The blue and white color scheme, let's talk about that really quick. Before the Kennedy administration the airplane Air Force One as you well know was silver um, with a black stripe and an orange front. Mrs. Kennedy, with a keen eye for design, thought that the airplane was too regal looking. So she came up with the color scheme that now still sticks today. Blue representing the blue skies, the white representing the clouds. And if you look at the side of the airplane where it says United States of America, it's actually the same font as the title of the Declaration of Independence. I never knew that. Yeah. So again, some of the mementos uh, from my career, there's a flag uh, flown on Air Force One, there's a flag flown on, uh, over the Capitol. Those were given to me in my retirement. This is the spirit of Sam Fox, the logo of the base. Uh, that was also given to me. Some of the other presentations that I, that I got during my career uh, for my retirement. These are the three patches. This is a presidential patch. This is a first lady patch. Um, and this is an Air Force Two patch. So we would wear that on our uniform when we were working on board the airplane. And when I met you, you actually gave me like a couple of coins, coins of like the challenge coins yes yeah i gave you the challenge coins i think i gave you an air force one challenge coin yeah yeah and uh challenge coins are really big in in um in basically in the military you would present these coins to somebody who kind of touched your life or uh, a vip or just somebody special basically and it comes it's the shape of a button so in world war one they told the down pilots take a u.s insignia uh, button off of your uniform and show it to the guys who are coming into extract you they will then know that you're an American pilot and that turned into a challenge coin and what you're supposed to do with a challenge coin is you keep it in your pocket if you find somebody else of any kind of value that has military or police or anything you take it out give it a tap if they don't have a coin they owe you a drink oh okay okay yep. so I should be carrying that around with you me every day in my pocket around. right <laughs> yeah um, in 2022, my high school, Colony Central High School in Albany, New York, um, honored me by inducting me in the Hall of Fame for service, humanitarian, and service to the community. So That I'm is really very, cool. Very, very honored to do that from my alma mater in Colony, New York. So let's talk about this chair right here. This chair actually came from the airplane that is now sitting at the Reagan Library. So President Reagan's Air Force One. This I've was, been in it. I know you have. <laughs> this is one of the um, chairs from the planes. When the maintenance guys, when they were getting the airplane ready to go over there, uh, the maintenance guys took this chair out and they had these in storage and they were going to get thrown away. And so I kind of rescued it as you do and uh, put it here in the, and eventually it's, it's made its way. It's gone to a veterans museum. 
uh, it's here now, and then I'm going to put it to another veterans museum uh, that's here uh, in town, local. That's really cool that you share that. Here's a first lady blanket um, and a pillow from Air Force One. These are kind of just mementos. Here's my flight jacket. This is what I would wear day to day around the squadron. Of course, my rank was senior master sergeant. That's an E-8. So that's only 2% of the Air Force will ever make E-8. And 1% will make E-9, which is the highest enlisted rank that you can make in the Air Congratulations, Force. Congratulations, sir. Thank you very much. Some of my uniforms that I wore over the years, uh, my battle dress uniforms, they called a a BDUs. Then they went to the ABUs, which are these two uniforms here. And of course, my flight suits. That's a desert flight suit that you would wear over in the desert. And then my green, what they call the green bean jumpsuit. This is my, uh, my jumpsuit that I would wear, uh, my flight suit that I would wear basically all around the squadron doing missions and stuff like that. This is my chef's jacket um, that I would wear on board the airplane for prepping of food. And you see a, a, a red, white, and blue jumpsuit over there. That's because I was a member of the Air Force's premier entertainment group, Tops and Blue. They are, uh, they go around the world, used to go around the world, touring, uh, performing for military members and their families, and that was the jumpsuit that you would wear while you were setting up the stage or tearing down the stage. Wow. Uh, you even have some, looks like presidential china. Yeah, so, so I figured, you know, with my service to um, our nation's leaders, I got to put things in display. So that's a letter uh, signed by President, the, uh, then Vice President Biden. That photo of he and I together was taken on his last official trip as Vice President. He signed the photo and then sent me the letter for, um, uh, for my retirement. And of course, you show that, you have to show our, our now President, then Vice President, Joseph R. Biden, which he's right here on your right hand side. And you have and then these quite are the guys that presidents. I, these are the guys that I uh, basically worked under as in my flying career. So President Trump, there's a certificate signed by President Trump, as well as a photo he signed uh, for me at my retirement ceremony. And then oh, that's um, cool. his coins are also on that photo. So you have frame. And there's a certificate signed by President Biden or President Obama and a photo signed by President Obama. One for President Bush, President Clinton, President Carter. That's great that you have photos with every president yep. that you worked with, worked for. I don't know how you would say that. Well, it's um, it, it, uh, worked under. The presidency. Worked under. That's yeah, the presidency. The, the president's the commander in chief. Absolutely. And the reason he is called the commander in chief is because he represents all of the services. So it, at the White House, for instance, the White House uh, mess is run by the Navy. The Air Force takes care of the transportation of the president to and from wherever he needs to go. The Army takes care of the communications aspects of the president. And then the Marines take care of the actual uh, security at the White House, as well as the transportation on Marine One, which is the presidential helicopter. President Obama and then President George W. Bush. Not junior and senior. So if you hear folks say President Bush Jr. or President Bush right. Sr., they weren't. Because he's George W. and his dad, President Bush, Herbert uh, was Herbert Walker and he was uh, 41. So one of the last things that I got to do in the Air Force was a, a great honor for me is I was one of the ushers at President Herbert Walker Bush's funeral. Wow. So at the, uh, at the, Capitol, um, at the Capitol and then over at the uh, National Cathedral. Here we have uh, the, the Texan through and through, President Johnson. I'm showing people a little behind you. What we haven't shown is you basically recreated the Oval Office yeah, here. Yeah, we, <laughs> I mean, yeah. as close as you can get in your home, well, so. I figured we have to have a place to put all the presidential me uh, mementos, so why Were not? you ever in the Oval Office? Oh, Did you yeah, ever? many times. Yeah, okay, I didn't know how that worked, yeah. considering. Yeah, I, I, my, I have a very good friend who works at the White House, so we, we used to go there quite often, and, and I'd go there and have lunch um, with him, or and it would be interesting. Like, even though I got to fly on board the airplanes with our nation's leaders, I would still get a crazy feeling when I was just walking casually through the White House and nobody was stopping us. It was just really kind of... Um, like it, you're doing something wrong? You know, it's an, it, I got a funny story. So I did Mrs. Obama's last trip when she was flying out to Chicago to say uh, for the president to give his goodbye to America speech. 
And during the flight, they took two, air, two separate airplanes. The president was on board Air Force One, and I was with the First Lady. Um, because after that trip in Chicago, she was going on to New York where she was appearing at The Tonight Show. Well, the president was going back to Washington, so we took two separate airplanes. Well, on the, on the flight out there, we had made Mrs. Obama cake, and we had a big party, and they had Beyonce playing on the speakers. And I mean, it was like a party atmosphere. And it was funny because we presented her with this cake. And, of course, the, the front of the airplane, the, the VIP suite was all packed full of people, the White House photographer was in there and there wasn't a knife so I went to the back to grab a to grab a butcher knife and I brought it up <laughs> and the White House photographer snapped a picture of me standing over Mrs. Obama with a butcher knife that would never happen anywhere else except for what we did yeah and that's it was, great it was one of those fun stories that you know I have no bad stories about the people that I took care of um, both Republicans and Democrats I'm would you a, be allowed to share them if you were I mean do they have a confidentiality you, once you're out no, I, you know I what think that's what's interesting is I never signed an NDA. Never. Because it's embedded. It's embedded in us that we don't talk about what we did. Yeah. Um, you know, it's flying through history, and that's kind of what the title of my book is going to be eventually. I've been writing a book for, you know, the last 20 years. Of As you should. Stories. Um, and it's just going to be about a positive kid, a kid from Albany, New York, that got to do the greatest job in the Air Force and fly our nation's leaders. It is such an honor to be in the military, but to be able to have done what I got to do at, at Joint Base Andrews, I mean, I can't even put it to words. That stuff that we talked about in the last videos with uh, Hollywood and everything, that's fun, but this is my passion. And yeah. Service is my passion, and, and being in the military was the greatest reward. Next to my wife and my son, the Air Force is everything to me. I'm blue through and through. When you cut my veins, no, no red comes out it's only that's blue. so cool yeah so we talked uh, about president johnson there's president kennedy of course some um president lincoln and then we have uh george washington in the back this is actually a death mask of lincoln's taken from the actual mold of the death mask and then yes yeah, so it's uh it's on board a a plate from air force one And then the desk. Here's the presidential seal. So this is a replica of the seal. I don't have a real one because it is a federal offense to tamper with the presidential seal. Oh. Yes. And uh, there's actually a guy who is in charge of carrying the seal wherever the president is speaking and then placing it out onto the podium. Wow. Yep. And I think I ask you this, but I know people have to be wondering because I think it was a joke I made when I went out. I was like, so if you if you're you know basically a flight attendant, does that mean you have to clean the toilets and stuff too? And you said, no, they have somebody that comes in and does that. <laughs> yeah, they do. But you know what? I've cleaned many a toilets on board the airplane before. The job really is not only taking care of um, the folks that we're flying, whether it be the Secretary of Defense, the Speaker of the House, the First Lady, the Vice President, or all the way down to the President. The job not only is taking care of them and feeding them and making all their food, but it's also cleaning the airplane and, 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 and getting their needs and taking care of everything that they need once they're on the airplane. The airplane is an extension of the office or in a lot of times extension of their house. So when they come on, they just want to relax. Because, be comfortable. Be comfortable because as soon as that door opens, the eyes of the world are on them. So they want to be able to be on and be refreshed and everything. So a lot of times... Like, you know, for instance, the first lady, Mrs. Obama, would come on and she'd put her sweatpants on as soon as she got on board the airplane. That's you know, interesting. Just so she would be comfortable. I was know? actually going to ask you something regarding that because I was like, I know that uh, President Reagan always liked to have jelly beans. Was there anything that any of the presidents that you worked for, you just knew uh, instinctually once they got on the plane, bring it to them because they, they, you know they want it like a drink so my, or anything so like that? He's a Diet Coke guy. Uh, uh, President Trump is a Diet Coke guy. So my friends who took care of President Trump, of course I was retired by the, at that point, but my friends who took care of President Trump, uh, he was a Diet Coke guy. And funny enough, a lot of people don't know this, but before President Trump came to office, of course he had his own airplanes, no flight attendants on board. He had a very small crew, and and he would get his own drinks and get his own food on board the airplane. So he didn't have a, he didn't actually have a full crew until he became uh, president. Wow. Yeah. Um, president Obama. There's great videos of him. He loves. He used to love cheeseburgers. So um, there's a video of him as as uh, a president elect, and the first thing he asked for is a cheeseburger. Okay. He, he actually. It's funny because the video shows him, and he goes, uh, "Can you make a cheeseburger?" And the guy's like, "Of course, Mr. President. <laughs> I can, we can make whatever you like." The bushes were really easy uh, people to take care Didn't of. Didn't he love bologna sandwiches? Was yes, that one of his things? Bologna sandwiches um, and non-alcoholic beer. Of course, it's very well known that um, President Bush was a recovering alcoholic. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, so he loved non-alcoholic beer. Uh, O'Doul's, I think that's what it's called. So yeah. he had plenty of O'Doul's on board. Um, but he was a Tex-Mex guy. You know, he's a Texan. And he and Mrs. Bush both loved Tex-Mex. So Mrs. Bush was super easy to take care of. She had a very small staff, um, very low uh, requirements as far as what she demanded on the airplane. Um, I really, I really enjoyed taking care of Mrs. Bush. She was a really nice lady. I was going to ask you, did you have any uh, personal favorites of people that you look forward to? You know, I do, and it's unfortunate. It's, it's, it's. They kind of blend together. I really liked Mrs. Bush. She was wonderful. Mrs. Obama was very nice. Her staff was very large, uh, so a little bit more demanding. Um, but you know, I liked people like the chair of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Admiral Mike Mullen. He was, he and Mrs. Mullen were great people. I love taking care of them. Um, Dr. Rice, Condoleezza Rice, she actually promoted me on board the airplane. No the kidding! Sergeant. Yeah, there's great photos out there of her giving me my stripes while flying. Um, Speaker Pelosi, she promoted me to Senior Master Sergeant. She was my last promotion. We did all of the promotions while flying. That's and so cool! President Biden um, uh, was then Vice President. Again, his last trip as vice president was that day I got to fly him. And it, you know, those kind of stories. Um, I flew President, uh, former President Clinton and President Herbert Walker Bush over to Banda Aceh to Indonesia after the tsunami. So, you know, it's just history. It's well, that's what I was wondering because I knew, you know, we've had presidents' deaths in the time that you yeah. were there. And I was wondering if. Um, if, if any of the presidents flew with the president to anything like that so, yeah, or so like that picture with president Carter was, um, on the day that we brought um, him to Washington when president Reagan passed away. Um, another great story, it comes out of when Pope John Paul passed away, all the presidents, the living presidents were on board the airplane that day, president wow. Ford, president Carter, president Clinton, president Herbert Walker Bush, and then of course, president D George W. Bush. Imagine all that on, on air well, force. One, and going over to Rome that day. I was just at the Billy Graham pre uh, library over there, and I was thinking, you know, there were so many pictures of him with about five presidents yeah. all in the same photo. I was wondering if they ever um, all got together to go to Billy Graham's funeral, or I think, I think there's some photos out there of of that of them all going to either Billy Graham's funeral. But I know there are some historic photos that are taken, like with President Nixon, um, with President Nixon, President Obama. They were all together in in one picture. And I think that was, I want to say that was the opening of the Reagan Library. President Obama wasn't in that shot, but I know Carter, Ford, President Reagan, and Herbert Walker Bush were all in that picture. Now I have to ask this question. Yeah. I know that President Obama was a smoker. Was he allowed to smoke on the plane? He didn't, he stopped smoking when he, um, when he uh, came into office. Oh, okay. I yeah, thought, I thought he, he kind of like secretly still. He probably did, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know of it. And it's fact, there's, there's great, well um, documented stories that no one smoked on our airplanes except for King Hussein. Okay. So, Cause I don't say there had to be an exception yeah, there somewhere. There so had to be. This is way before my time, but when president Clinton was in office, they were flying together in, on air force one and King Hussein said, uh, would you like to share a cigar? And uh, he said, sure, Mr. <laughs> Sure, Your Majesty, we can share a cigar. So President Clinton and uh, His Majesty King Hussein of Jordan actually shared a cigar on board the airplane. That's very well documented that he would, I think, would probably have been the last person to smoke on board the airplane. But you mentioned Reagan, and before President Reagan, there were actually presidential cigarettes on board the airplane. So if you, let's see if I have a box of, um, I have matchbooks and I have all kinds of, well, up there... Um, there is uh, a box of M&Ms that um, they got Trump's signature, President Trump's signature on them. Um, and let's see if I have another box. They are shaped like a box of cigarettes. Here's Matchbook. So even today, for just for the historical purposes, you can get on board the airplane. They have presidential matches. It's Very like cool. Aboard the presidential aircraft. So did you have any crazy first day or last day stories? Because usually that's when the I, yeah. craziest things, the mishaps happen. Okay, so I was flying, um, I was flying Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld. We were flying over to Afghanistan. And we were on a C-17 aircraft, which is the biggest airplanes in the Air Force's inventory. And um, what they do is they take an Airstream trailer and they actually load it on board the airplane. And the, the VIP can then fly in the Airstream trailer in this cargo plane, really, but be very, very comfortable. 
Well, the Secretary of Defense got on board and I said, let me go. Uh, as soon as we took off, I said, let me go and see if the Secretary needs anything. And I walked into the the, uh, the Airstream and I said, hi, Mr. Secretary, do you, would you like anything? And he said, yeah, can you get me a Coke and can you warm it up? Sure. No problem. So I shut the door. I went to the galley and I said to my partner uh, who was with me in the airplane, um, the Secretary wants a Coke and he wants it warm. Okay, so what do you do? I took the Coke out of the fridge and put it in one of these plastic cups here and then put it in the microwave to warm it up. And I brought it in <laughs> and I set it on the desk. There you go, Mr. Secretary. And he took a real quick drink of it and he said, this is warm. It's hot. I said, yes, sir. And he goes, well, I want ice. I want it cold. I thought, what? But this is what they call CRM, crew resource management, being aware of what's being said. Get me a Coke and warm it up. It's cold. Warm there, up the room. Is what he gotcha. Wanted. That's what he wanted. So that was like my first trip with Secretary Rumsfeld. He was actually my first passenger that I ever uh, that I ever flew, um, which is you know fun. And those stories are great. Those are the kind of stories that would go eventually go in the book. You know, there's another great story about a flight attendant, a very good friend of mine, who was flying the Secretary, and he was a student at the time. He was going through and he was securing the cabin and doing this and that. And he grabbed it. He went through and he grabbed the bag and he went to put it up. And the Secretary said, "That's my dog." His dog was actually in his oh, dog wow. carrier, and he was going to put him up into the uh, overhead storage. It's crazy. Those stories are just, you know, there's tons of them out there. Thank you so much, Richard. That's like a, a side of someone's life you never hear about because, you know, every, every job has to be done, and you never know how someone gets a job like being on Air Force One or, the, you know, Force the helicopters or, yeah. or anything. You know, it's just incredible to hear your story and how decorative a career you had thank you for your great, service thank it was an honor to serve trust me it was my biggest honor it was a great um a great honor to work on board the airplanes at andrews but even a bigger honor to serve our nation and and thank you to all the military members who are still doing what they did past present and future mm -hmm.